Let's check this out. When Tyson challenges the biggest several people seem to think that he's George Foreman, but he's stronger than George Foreman. He's Joe Frazier, but he's faster and he's more powerful than Joe Frazier. And he's Rocky Marciano, but he's almost 30 pounds heavier than Rocky Marciano. So that combination, I think, bodes pretty well for Mike Tyson. Welcome back to another Big Fight Recap here on BLTV Classic. Yes, Tyson has the anticipation of a Doberman who's happened upon 210 pounds Doberman. of unguarded feet. On today's video, we look back yeah, at the night fair Tyson assessment. fought by the horse's mouth, not only the biggest man in his career, but also the toughest. As the 6'6 six six Cuban heavyweight Jose Rivalta six, with six. inconceivable damage inflicted by the most ruthless version of Iron Mike the I mean, world men has do look ever big. seen. One of the great heavyweight slugfests of all time. Let's get right to Oof. it. Those eyes. The ravening ravaging of Rhea Falta. At five foot ten and a half, Mike Tyson was significantly the shortest heavyweight contender ranked by the Ring Magazine's top ten in the fall of 86. Many Wait, did you say 5'11"? Champs are 5'11". What can I say? 5'11". 5'11". Champs. In the fall of 86. Many boxing fans will remember this era as the New Age, the land of the giants, with the large majority of top contenders and champions from here on out standing in excess of 6'4". Primo Carnera, the heavyweight boxer called that is really short for a heavyweight. Five eleven. Jesus. Like most of them are over six two. Champions in the past, with Jess Willard and Primo Carnera being prime examples of towering fighters, often branded as unskilled behemoths, circus acts whose achievements in the sport are credited strictly to their advantage in size and weight. That notion changed drastically with the introduction of world-class trainers such as Eddie Fitch and Emmanuel Stewart, who were fixated on not only utilizing the physical advantages a sizable fighter possesses, but more making their boxing skills comparable to the guys a half a foot or so shorter than them. But right now, Lennox Lewis is giving an old-fashioned whooping to David Tua. Once Riddick fell when Lennox Lewis became the dominant force in the division, big men have ruled the roost ever since. When I was young, I used to always say, God, I miss, I miss a midget. I'm never going to I'm never going to be anything because I'm too short to Jesus. do any kind of sports, anything. But then, you know, I mean, I started believing in myself and things worked out right. It's scary how far belief will take you. Jose Rivalta was one of those classic, long-rangey fighters that dominated the amateur boxing circuit in his teens due to his size being Man also had skill, though. With the classic <laughs> like, dance like boxing skills talked like about no the other. Cuban boxing in the States, the Fifth Street Gym in Miami. My tight. Here I come. Here I come. Tell me me. By the time Jose turned pro in 1982, he was the number two rated amateur heavyweight in America, and he used his skills to defeat the usual suspects of journeymen such as David Jacko and Rick Keller in the coming years. Well, he goes up against Jose Rivalta, who has to be considered a threat. A Jose man. was robbed of his first moment of genuine boxing notoriety in his 1985 clash with the soon-to-be heavyweight champion right James Crusher Smith. Everyone outside of two of the three ringside judges felt he won with relative ease. However, dubious decisions are unfortunately a part of the game, and as many fighters have displayed in the past, early setbacks can either make or break a character. And during the Tyson buildup in July 1986, Jose seemed to be peaking, not only physically, but mentally, certain he would be the man to stop Tyson's 25 fight unbeaten streak. There's a man that could beat Mike Tyson, it's Jose Rivalta. It's gonna be a lot of people surprised down in Miami when he knocks him out. When Mike Tyson hurts a guy, he puts him to sleep. If he tags Jose, oh, that old I hope 80s he don't think music. Lay down. He just better be ready to take another shot. And I'm not gonna take no credit away with him, but he's to this day he hasn't faced anybody that can The video Jose quality straight, adds right? everything to it too. <laughs> wait, what do you say? You say he's not gonna be safe? Hey, wait, what? Jose. 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 Oh. But I know he's I never see. been in there with a fighter like me. You watch me fight. Devastation and give him a slow beating, nearly death. Yes, Tyson has the anticipation of a Doberman who's happened upon 210 pounds of unguarded feet. Tyson met Rivalta at the Trump Plaza Hotel in Atlantic City on August 17th. That yeah, man looks a little spooked. The tension between the two created a rightfully so atmosphere among the lucky 1,000 people in attendance. Tyson's snarly grimaces were met by Rivalta's death defying eyes. It was clear to the viewing audience that they were in for oh, a special mind. night of heavyweight boxing action. Wait, from another angle, it looked like he spooked, but the from the front angle, he looked like he meant business. Wait a second, look at that. Oh, whoa. Fell in Atlantic City on look. August 17th. Oh, from that angle, see, he looks spooked. Atlantic see, he City. looks angry there, but there he looked kind of spooked when you go to the side. Okay, I see. On August 17th, 1986. The tension well, he looks game. created a legendary atmosphere among the lucky 1,000 people in attendance. 
Tyson's snarly grimaces were met by Rivalta's death-defying eyes. It was clear to the viewing audience that they were in for a special night of heavyweight boxing action. Just as expected, Tyson is right in the chest of Rivalta. Oh, just ripping the body and take it. Boom. A classic right hook to the body, right uppercut combo put Rivalta down at the end of the second round. The sheer power of the uppercut would have been enough to send 99.9% .9 of every human on earth to the shadow realm. Look at all that Yet, sweat that came off, man. I mean, jeez. Rivalta made it back to his feet with enough that was a punch right there. it out until the end of the round. He's still there, though. Rivalta's resilience, Tyson elected for the water in the basement approach in the next few rounds, hammering Jose to the body to try and soften his core. As he should. With a big guy like that, 5'11 versus 6'6, great idea. Oh my goodness, look at the head movement, too, to get inside. The man is getting inside. Oh, flawless. <laughs> oh, oh. It's disgusting. He's treating him like a punching bag, man. Just ripping that body. He's nasty, like. Tyson took his attacks upstairs by the end of the seventh, boxing with the same ferocity as he did in the first, throwing with the speed and power of a man that has barely broken a sweat. Does he hit? This guy's just eating it though. Oof. Lost the mouth guard on that one. That man do sit ups for sure. Oof. Oof. Tyson seems shocked that Rivalta had made it to his feet again. Yet instead of I mean, taking I am his feet too. off the gas and losing the unanimous him. decision, he wanted to entertain the fans by closing the show. Oh, the jumping left hook. That's a fighter. Knocked out Revolta, Bro, that guy has got man, heart, I'm though. Sure the great he still got up. Man, man was still arguing with the ref. He's got heart, man. Out of himself, Jesus. Of. But as always, HBO's Larry Merchant was underwhelmed by his performance and grilled the aspiring champ in the post-fight interview. Since my, mm. this guy was a tougher nut to crack than you thought, I bet. Fair enough. He had his mind concentrating. He was going to fight. He did well, and I commend him very dearly. Very what tough. made him so tough? The fact that he fought back, unlike the other fighters who've taken you this far? Most definitely, he fought back and he had um, the idea in his mind he wasn't going to get knocked out. But as you notice, he was knocked down, but wasn't knocked out because he had his mind conscious of that. Are there too many expectations of you, Mike? Do you think that if you don't, you're in a bind, that if you don't knock him out early, if you knock him out early, everybody says the other guy was a bum. If it, if it goes this far, everybody says you weren't, you can't hit that hard. Well, what can I say? This happened. Uh, Tyson showed a lot of class in his response by simply what a question acknowledging that Rivalta <laughs> was as tough and game as they come. Okay. In an interview for Ring Magazine in 2014, Tyson named Rivalta as the most durable fighter he'd ever faced, along with the strongest, claiming that the Cuban He's got quite a chin on him, that's for sure. Record, 32 wins, 9 defeats. If Tyson had never met Rivalta, I doubt that there'd be even a single person who would have expected him to put up such a brave effort against a prime Mike Tyson, because after the match, his career went more or less down the drain, certifying himself as a bona fide journeyman by his mid-twenties. Rivalta retired after five straight losses in 1999, yet to this day, he still oh. wants a rematch with Tyson. In fact, his Facebook page is littered with non-stop so to the point of obsession. Usually, I'd huh? laugh off these call-outs, but with the current landscape in the game today, you just never know who will return to the ring. Well, that's true. Influencer boxing is massive. 
I mean, Boxy's just in a different space in general. <laughs> yeah. That was a, that was a good video.